So you're in a bad mood. That's okay. Let's work through it. In this video, we explore the psychology of a bad mood, analytically and experientially. Moods are tricky because you typically don't know what prompts them. Yet despite this, your mind will come up with all kinds of explanations for why you're in this mood. Finding causal explanations is one of those evolutionarily selected talents of the mind. Sometimes the explanations are accurate, sometimes they're not. Convincing as our own explanations for why we're in this mood may be, we also intuit that the true origin of the mood is tough to pinpoint. And that vague nature of the origin of our mood makes it hard to figure out a solution so the mood lingers. Now we will analyze further, but in this moment, let's set the tool of analytical thinking down and just feel for a moment. Just experience. Simply shift awareness into the feelings of your body. What's noticeable? This is interoception, direct awareness of internal bodily sensation. It's an essential tool for monitoring and regulating our mind-body system. Let's extend this next exhale. Then let the inhale rush into you. And then we'll release control of breathing and practice awareness of raw internal sensation. Consciousness of the feeling scape of this mood. Still present with the sensation? We'll get a little analytical again. According to the American Psychological Association, a mood is any short-lived emotional state usually of low intensity. It is a disposition to respond with a particular emotional tone that may last for hours, days, or even weeks, and typically without you knowing exactly what prompted the state. So a mood is a state. A state, psychologically speaking, is the condition or status of an entity at a particular time characterized by relative stability of its basic components or elements. So what are the basic components of your state, your mood? Thoughts, feelings, the state of your body, your behavior, along with all the faculties of your mind, such as memory, imagination, attention, perception. So the mood you are in is a state of mind defined by a particular quality that has become relatively stable and is reflected in all the various components of your psychological functioning. Your thoughts, feelings, actions, body language, as well as your attention, and even your breathing and other physiological processes are all colored by your mood. Now it's important to understand that these components of your mood are linked and they remain congruent with each other. They reflect the same quality. If you're in an irritated mood, your thoughts will reflect this irritability, your face will wear it, you'll breathe shallowly, you'll feel that tense, agitated sensation in your body, your attention will fixate on irritating stimuli, and your perception will render an increasing percentage of your environment as irritating. And of course, you will act irritated. The components of your mood are connected. On that note, let's extend another exhale and draw the following inhale deep into the lungs. Awareness of the sensation in the body releasing tension from your tissues, 
accepting that for now, this is how I feel. Now here is the empowering application of this knowledge. Because the components of your state of mind, your mood are connected, a change in the activity of one of them can initiate a change in the activity of all of them. And you, the conscious experiencing participating being with the capacity to influence your own functioning, you can exercise your volition to change any one of these components of your state of mind. Importantly, as you begin to exercise your volition to regulate your mood, you have to do it from a place of being okay with what is. It's known as the paradox of change in psychology. Only once I accept the conditions of myself can I actually change them. So with full recognition that this mood is unpleasant, but with no resistance to the fact that it is the mood you find yourself in, you can take the reins and you can begin to think differently in this very moment. You can have the voice in your head say, this too shall pass. In this very moment, you can shift your attention to something beautiful or adorable or intriguing or compelling or uplifting or important or lighthearted. In this moment, you can modify your body language, lengthen your spine, lift your eyebrows, Put on a micro smile and retract your shoulder blades a bit. In this moment, you can extend an exhale and pull an inhale low into the lungs. And of course, you can act differently. So in subtle or dramatic ways, you can modify your functioning. And when you do any of this, you may feel discomfort resistance, awkwardness, that's natural. What has happened is that you've introduced an incongruence between the components of your mood, your positive thought or your relaxed body language or your slow breathing or your act of kindness or your fixation on that flower doesn't match your bad mood. And this incongruence creates tension. But that tension is natural. It's good. It's the beginning of the emotional shift. And this tension will precipitate change. It may result in you succumbing to the bad mood again, or it may result in a thorough mood shift. Either way, congruence between the various components of your mood will be reestablished. So if you commit to the shift and you use any one of these components of your mood as an entry point to exercise your volition and regulate your system, by the laws of psychology, your mood will change. And remember the importance of regulating your mood from a place of accepting your mood. We aren't trying to escape anything, nor are we chasing anything. Bad moods, emotional malaise, and psychological pain can be valuable. These can be messengers and signals that give us feedback about our life. So glean whatever is valuable from your bad mood. But when you feel stuck in a mood that is not serving you, I hope you can apply what you learned in this video, setting our tool of analytical thinking down again and just breathing feeling conscious of your mood in this moment.